As we finish the all-star break, who has passing grades for the Wild and who is coming up short? We go in. Lock me use that one. I was trying to go a particular way um, <laughs> to rope it in, and it just didn't didn't sound right. <clears throat> All right. Today on Locked on Wild, class is in session. We hand out letter grades for the offense, the defense, and more as we continue through the All-Star break. You're Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day of the week. Just a reminder, you can find Lockdown Wild on all of your favorite podcast platforms absolutely free of charge. On today's episode of Lockdown Wild, Austin Lundin of 10,000 Takes is here as we go to the classroom to hand out letter grades for all aspects of the Minnesota Wild through the first half of the season. Today's episode is brought to you by the exclusive sportsbook of Locked On. That, of course, is FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider, and we are heading back to school, something I never thought I would say again in my life. But uh, Austin Lundin of 10,000 Takes is here. We're going to hand out some letter grades for the Wild in various aspects of the first half of the season. Austin, welcome to the show. Glad to have you. And uh, with many members of the Minnesota Wild on the East Coast, enjoying and uh, and trying to get out of the cold. Uh, glad to hear that you are doing the same on the other side of the country, uh, down in Arizona. Unfortunately, here in Minnesota, not a lot of warmth uh, at this point uh, in the All-Star break. Yeah, no, it's been a, it's been great. First and foremost, thanks for having me on. It's a, it's an honor and yeah, I have family all back in Minnesota and I'm very thankful that I can look outside. Uh, it's dark out right now, but during the day and see blue sky and a couple palm trees here and there. So I'll take it. Yeah. Uh, it uh, it sounds lovely. And so I uh, <laughs> hope everybody is enjoying and uh, we are going to get down into uh, the nitty and the gritty today. Taking a look at the first half of the season, well, first half plus, but it's the all-star break, so technically it's the first half of the season. I, all the particulars. It's yeah, <laughs> it's tricky. But uh, we're going to go through offense, defense. We'll go through special teams. We'll go through the goalie situation, and uh, we'll talk about uh, the coaching, and we'll probably talk about Billy Guerin as well. So a lot to get to. Let's start with the offense. Uh, if you had to assign a letter grade for the wild offense so far this season. Where do you go? Oh boy. I'm going to have to go back to my uh, fourth grade math teacher for this one. Uh, <laughs> she said, uh, she told me that you're a nice guy, but you're not very good at what you do. So, you know, you look back at five and five hockey last year and we were one of the top teams. And now this year we, uh, I think we're 27th or 28th, something like that in the, uh, in the league. So I think, I'm honestly going to give them a C plus for the offense. I'm feeling C plus. You know, that's that's perfect because that's pretty much where I was at too. I, I was kind of in that B minus C plus range. Mm -hmm. And look, you've got the high end guys. You've got Kirill Kaprizov who individually is going to take home an A. You know, right. Matt Zuccarello probably going to be right behind him. Matt Boldy, Jewel Erickson Eck. But the biggest thing coming into this season was guys replicating their seasons from last year to help right. keep this offense on the same level. Marcus Foligno has not. Ryan Hartman has not. Jordan Greenway has. <laughs> He's sleeping. Yeah, Who knows Jordan what's Greenway going has on? <laughs> not. And so even with those top-level guys, it's still not enough to keep this team you know, more around that B or that A range. It just is right. an offense that's so inconsistent and it's passable, mm -hmm. maybe, 
But um, yeah, I, I'm right with you. I think C plus is perfect. Good mm-hmm. moments, bad moments, but by and large, not uh, not a thrilling performance. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And it's it's tough, right? Because, you know, like you attested to, a lot of these players are trying to mimic last season, but they, they've they come up short time and time again. I mean, you look at Hartman, I know injury kind of held him back a little bit this season, but he's he's spending way too much time in the penalty box. And then you have uh, Jordan Greenway, which I was reading an article a couple weeks ago where he literally slept through a morning practice and then he didn't play that night. So it's it's pure laziness from his end but uh yeah we just have to get these guys uh get these guys rolling and maybe we put Hartman back on that top line to you know increase the grade but yeah we'll see you what know, happens it is funny too because i think we're hearing more and more of that as a suggestion because you've got Kaprizov you've got Zuccarello on that top line and they're just continuing to hammer away but um you know, Sam Steele, he he played well enough to earn that spot mm-hmm. um, earlier in the season. It just it feels like if that line had maybe another scorer to add to the mix, Steele is benefiting from those opportunities, but it seems mm-hmm. like his scoring has dried up. And so maybe yeah. it is time for a little bit of a switch on that top line. Yeah, I mean, I've from day one uh, of the season, I've always been a strong advocate for uh, Marco Rossi. We obviously saw how that started off, but uh, he uh, he sounds like he's gaining back his confidence. So, with what's been going on, where you know we've been seeing scratch players here and there, maybe we bring up Rossi for an experiment. But that's something that's always on my mind. I want him back in the NHL, but right. uh, uh, yeah, Sam Steele though, he's definitely dried up. And Kaprizov and Zook, they need that. And Boldy's missing that piece with Piala gone. So time will tell. Yeah, and I'm I'm intrigued by what we saw the last game of the of the uh, first half quotes well, right. of the yeah. season with Marcus Foligno on that line because it, it was mentioned in the comments on one of uh, one of our previous episodes that you know Marcus Foligno may not give you that speed element on that mm-hmm. line, but what he does and what Freddie Goudreau do is they can win all those battles on the boards and it has allowed Matt Boldy to be kind of the primary shot guy right, on that line, which is going to turn him from more of a facilitator passer to the, hey, if I get the puck, I'm going to blast it at whoever's in net. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And it, he needs to shoot more. I mean, it, how do you, you know, how do you score a goal? You shoot the puck. And we saw a little bit of that of Kaprizov. He was getting a little too fancy with his buddy Zook, and uh, he missed some great, you know, goal opportunities. But Boldy just needs to shoot. And uh, we we saw it the other night. Uh, there is uh, typically it's after the power play, but they'll put Boldy, Kaprizov, and Zook on a line, and he's just rolling. Mm-hmm. And you, to your point, you know, with Felino on that line too, the puck is always seeming uh, seeming to find Boldy's stick. So shoot it. So have puck, shoot puck, score puck, uh, yeah. I think is as simple <laughs> as you can possibly put it. So yes. C plus for the offense. Now yep. the power play grade will be different. And so some of that factors into the offense, but we'll do special teams. We're going to do goalie and defense next. And so we'll tackle both of those areas as we continue to hand out the letter grades. Class is in session. Report cards are coming home to your parents. So make sure that you have uh, the appropriate grades to uh, to get the uh, the pat on the back. We'll continue to hand out those letter grades as we continue today's episode of Lockdown Wild after this. Today's episode of Lockdown Wild is brought to you by the official sportsbook partner of Locked On. That, of course, is FanDuel Sportsbook. And if you're new to FanDuel, even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel now so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no-sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Best of all, you can get paid your winnings instantly. 
So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of Locked On. Continuing today's episode of Locked On Wild, once again, thank you for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day for your second listen. Swing over to Wild Takes to get the latest from the wild side of 10,000 Takes, available on all of your favorite podcast platforms. Seth Topal and Austin Lundin handing out letter grades for the wild so far this season. All right, let's move to defense. What do you give the defense so far? Uh, if we were doing this at the start of the season, it would have been a flat F. It was terrible. Uh, I think they've definitely picked up steam, and that you know helps with goaltending too. I will get to that in a little bit here, but I think I'm going to give defense a B. I, uh, I'm feeling good about a B, Seth. Okay. I, um, I'm going to go slightly higher. I'm going B plus because the underlying metrics, um, shout out to Jay Fresh on Twitter. Um, retweet those any chance I get. Uh, <laughs> the Wild are in the top, I believe, top five in terms of expected goals against per 60 minutes, and it's something like 2.5. So defensively, the underlying metrics look really good. However, that only tells one side of the story. You've got the eye test as well, and you can ask any Wild fan, us, anybody, anybody in the comments, and we see what happens from time to time. There just are instances in which players are out of position. You leave an opponent wide open to just waltz right up to the net and blast one on Fleury or Gustafson. Now, that has been better recently, but uh, it also factors in that, um, you know, as much of a player as he was in his uh, previous few years with this franchise, Matt Dumba defensively is uh, not, um, not great. No, he's... He's not, and it's uh, it's it's been hard. It's been hard to watch. Uh, for those listening, uh, I'm sorry if I upset anyone, but I've never been a Dumba fan. I haven't. Uh, from day one, I haven't. Uh, my dad and I used to call him Matt Dumb, and that was it. So, it, but earlier in his career, he did <laughs> stupid stuff, and we're kind of seeing it again. And after that fight back in, I think it was 2019, where he was out the rest of a season, he hasn't been the same. And, uh, you know, it, it's unfortunate to see, but he's he's been terrible. You know, he's a lot of turnovers, like you attested to it, a lot of open, wide open lanes for people just to smash the puck through. And a lot of the time he's there. So it, it's tough to see. Yeah. If it were possible to give Jonas Brodeen um, higher than an A plus for carrying that line combination for almost a decade, <laughs> um, I yeah. would. And, you know, you've got Spurgeon, you've got Middleton at the top. The underside of that defense sometimes gets picked on a little bit. We've seen that at points mm -hmm. this season. And so, you know, BB plus, I think, is, is perfectly fine for where they're at. It takes into account what we saw at the beginning of the season. And it also gives some praise for what we've seen recently because it hasn't necessarily been the offense carrying the way for this team. Um over the uh, the majority of the season, so I'm right with you on that. I think I think I know where we're headed with goaltending. So yeah. what uh, what letter grade are we giving the goaltending so far this season? Uh, I'm going to give them an E minus. I uh, Gustafson has been absolutely phenomenal. Great pickup for us. Flurry started out a little scary, uh, as did Gustafson, but we've been as of late seeing a very vintage Marc Andre Flurry, which is what we deserve and need. Mm -hmm. So definitely going A minus. We we're very fortunate with the goaltending. Yes, you're you're spot on. Um, Gustafson's been a revelation. Top ten in pretty much every statistical yep. category for goalie, and not just in like, not just in the Central Division, not just in the <laughs> Western Conference. It's top ten in the NHL for goalie statistics this season. And so he obviously has been sensational. Mark Andre Fleury has had some blips on the radar, but it feels like if you give him 
I'm going to use an analogy here. It, Mark Andre Fleury is a little bit of an older car, and so it may take him a little bit to get going. But once you get him going, he's fine. And that may take you know four or five, four or five starts to do. <laughs> but if you're just going to start him up cold and fire up and go, might be some issues. But if you yeah. get him, if you get him in kind of that groove, that rhythm then he he is perfectly capable of doing some really good things. And not to say the other times he isn't, because you can count on multiple hands the number of times that he's kept the team in games early on, especially. Oh, right. Well, there's good play there. It's just, it seems like for him, if you give him a couple starts in a row, that's when you really start to see the good stuff. Right, and that's what you've been seeing lately, too, because what, he played three games, three yep. in a row? And, uh, yeah, I... I want to say oh, that analogy is spot on. <laughs> I, it kind of reminded me of the little engine that could or little yeah. train, train that could. No, that's that brings me back to my childhood. I'm going to call my dad after this and see how he's doing. <laughs> but it is it is great because in previous seasons and even last year, you know, Cam Talbot went on the run at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. But the goaltending, there were points where you'd look and you'd see that you won six to five and you're like, Boy, or you come up on the wrong end of like a seven to two game. And you're like, what is going on? And there was some of that at the beginning of the year, but ever since then, it's been mostly clamps for uh, for Gustafson and Flurry, which is is it's nice to not really have to worry about what sort of goaltending performance you're going to get. Now, <laughs> worrying about what kind of offense you're going to get, you could argue <laughs> is a bigger problem. Yeah, but it's nice. It's nice to have that back end pretty well secure at this point in the season. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, going back to the offense and having this brick wall of a, you know, goalie duo, the offense being one of the worst teams five on five. We need we need the defense to stand up, uh, which they have and the goalies, which they really have. So we're fortunate. <laughs> yes. Consider we, we count our blessings here in the uh, the state of hockey that got two pretty good goaltenders. Uh, defense is, is rounding into form and, mm-hmm. you know. Billy Guerin waiting in the wings to uh, to do what he needs to do. Could stand pat, could make a move. We got time to figure it out. We got a month before that has to be figured out. So just just let it ride. Yeah, and the uh, longest month of all time. It, it is. It really is. And it's a long month of February to begin with. But this gauntlet of a schedule coming up, the lead up to the trade deadline, it's it's going to feel like two months before yeah. we get there yeah i feel bad for my wife she's gonna ask me out on a date for valentine's day and i'm gonna be too attached to twitter like i have a really strong feeling garen's about to make a move do not talk to me give me like uh, five minutes six yeah. hours later it's I, I had i had that happen with the fiala trade um i forget <laughs> where i was going but i was on the way somewhere and the news broke and i'm like you're kidding me so uh, it was, I was going to a friend's house, uh, a buddy of mine in, I think it was Madison okay. and it happened on my ride there. So I'm in my head. I'm like, okay, so the first like hour that I get there is going to be some work involved. <laughs> it's like, just, can you just run it by me before you do anything to make sure right. that I'm home? Right. That's it, all I'm saying. The front office really should put fans feelings ahead of their decisions in my personal opinion because i I mean yeah right it would save countless fights it would save uh (laughs) long car rides where you just really want to pull over and do your work there you know just just let us know just say hey fans we're making a trade but in honor an observance of valentine's day or in (laughs) observance of this weekend we're going to wait to announce it till monday (laughs) right no absolutely respect that's all I'm Respectful. saying. Yep. Well, let's um let's factor that into Bill Guerin's letter grade. We'll finish today <laughs> coaching special teams and Bill Guerin's work himself as we hand out the final letter grades of the first half of the season as we continue today's episode of Lockdown Wilds after this. Today's episode of Lockdown Wild is also brought to you by Built Bar. And if you are looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories attached, you've got to try Built Bar. 
What makes Bill Bar so good? Well, for starters, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. If that doesn't hook you right off the top, I don't know what to tell you. They also come in some unbelievably good flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. If that's not enough, they are incredibly healthy too. Each Built Bar contains only 130 calories and 4 grams of sugar while being packed with a whopping 17 grams of protein. All this time, Built.com was the best route to go to grab yourself a box, but what if I told you you can now get them at Walmart and Sam's Club? So whether you go to your local Walmart, swing by Sam's Club, or head to Built.com, grab yourself a box today and get your snacking on right with Built Bar. Final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Once again, thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. For your second listen, make sure you check out the It's a Bit podcast as part of 10,000 Takes. We're, we're sending everybody to 10,000 Takes today for their second and their third listens. Uh, I love what you guys do over there, and uh, hopefully the, uh, the listeners here at Lockdown Wild will reciprocate that also. Yeah, I no, greatly appreciate that. And uh, I've been with them just about a year now, and it's truly, so, you know, they're the greatest people you'll meet, you know, top to bottom. They're fantastic, and everyone's treated the same, and it's it's awesome to be a part of. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's fun to uh, to see them do their thing from the outside, and paths cross every now and again, and nothing but A+. Plus. So Perfect. Hey, same to, to you. Uh, yeah. A+. Plus. <laughs> appreciate it. All right, letter grades to finish. Let's start with the power play and the penalty kill. This one's interesting because, well, reasons. Right. Oh, boy. This is tough. Uh, you know, power play, I'm going to go with a, a B. And power kill, uh, I might go a B, B minus, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I know where you're going with this. And I think I think I'm on the same plane because power play one, A plus. Oh, absolutely. Like hands down, A plus. Mm -hmm. They've been fantastic all season. Have struggled with zone entries at points throughout right. the year, which has led to some instances in which power play one can't even get into the offensive zone. Yep. And sometimes a little too pass heavy, but by and large, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Power play two is trying. I didn't, know there was, I didn't even know there was such a thing. Yeah. Power play two, <laughs> power play two is trying. So yeah. it's not an F, but it's not great. It's no. please see me at conferences is <laughs> the uh is the mark on the report card for the uh penalty kill or power play unit two. Yeah is please see me at conferences. And for the penalty kill. I feel like with the penalty kill, there's a penalty kill is good up until X number of attempts per game. Right. If you exceed that, that's where there starts to be that fall off the cliff. Yeah. And so that leads into the amount of penalties that are taken. And that yeah, aspect of this team also is a please see me at conferences. Like yeah. We're not mad, just we'd like to see a little less in yeah. the sin bin for this team. Yeah, not mad, but disappointed. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, with, with an aggressive penalty kill, sometimes you're going to just run into a really good power play that's able to exploit it. Right. Um, but also, I think just the volume that they get put out there is where the issues lie. If, they, if they're out there one or two times a game, fine. Not bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but when you have Ryan Hartman spending a whole period in the sin bin time and time and time again, then it's time to go to the counselor. That's that's where the issues lie. So I, I like those grades for, for special teams. Let's go to Dean and the coaching staff. <laughs> I, I love them. I mean, th my favorite part is whenever... Really, whenever we win a game, Dean's just beating the crap out of uh, out of the other coaches. And I, I know the Wild did a little bit here where uh, it's not weird; it's wild. And uh, I I'm gonna give them an A, and okay. I give them an A because they're 
they're the coaching staff that really just wants the best out of the team. And Everson seems like a guy that's not going to, you know, hold anything back. And if, if you tick him off, you're going to hear it. And I, I love that in a coach. And we need that in a coach, especially where we're at with the playoffs coming up. So mm-hmm. I'm going to give him an A. Okay. I, I'm going to be plus. Um, and, you know, I think, I think at the beginning of the year, the, the big one for me is the Marco Rossi situation. Oh, yeah, but I feel like that was just such a whirlwind of everything that led yeah. to that playing out the way that it did. The team was mm-hmm. losing early on in the season. Injuries. And so I- injuries. So your plan for what you wanted to see from Rossi early in the season, just it didn't happen. Right. And whether it was not the right choice to put him on that fourth line to begin with, I understand wanting to just give him an opportunity to kind of get used to everything going on at the NHL level mm-hmm. while also not having as much responsibilities on the ice. I get that. I don't have a problem with that. Right. So I, I don't know if, yeah, I, I don't know if it just was kind of a victim of circumstances type thing for, for Rossi in that situation. So some of that is is why I'm I'm going B plus for Dean. You yeah. know, he's he's a guy who when things are going well, he doesn't tinker mm-hmm. with the lineup. He just trusts the guys to to do their thing, which is great because a lot of times this this offense does well um kind of fighting through it. Mm-hmm. They obviously adjust well, it seems like after after losses. And so I I think with the roster that they have, I think Dean is doing just about as much as can be done with this group. You've got constraints, courtesy of Parisian Suter, that are not allowing you to optimize this roster as much as you may um, have done. And so I think with what he has, I think Dean is doing fine. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to... You've persuaded me. I was recently caught cheating on a test. Uh, this is the analogy. Uh, this is the situation I recently got. I cheated on the test, so my grade went from an A minus or A to an A minus because Rossi. I love Rossi, and yeah, that whole situation. I, I get. I get the injuries. I think Duham, uh He got injured. I think on Halloween was it, and then he mm-hmm. was out for a few months, and then Hartsey had been battling, and then he was out. Uh, but they put Rossi literally up in the press box for 10 games and he didn't, he wasn't playing and that didn't yeah. help anything. So a minus I cheated. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We don't, Shoot. uh, we don't hold it against you here. Perfect. So we'll, uh, more we'll, than, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll finish with, uh, with the man guiding the ship, the great ship, the SS state of hockey, or would it be the S of hockey the, the, I don't I don't know. I don't know ship names. We're not, we're not yeah. going to get off track. Um <laughs> letter grade for Bill Garrett. Oh, I love Billy G. I'm going to give him an A. Yeah. We there's I'm, I'm not even I'm not going to argue the point because he the vision is clear of what he is trying to do, where he's trying to take this franchise. He made the decision early on in his tenure to get Zach Parisi and Ryan Suter out of here yep. to improve the uh, the chemistry on the team. That has notably been way better since. Mm-hmm. The moves that he's made, Philip Gustafson for Cam Talbot, A. Yep. Bringing Ryan Reeves in to inject some life into this team for a fifth-round pick in 2025. It's a very, very good move. Oh, um, absolutely. Sam Steele career season, maybe playing out of position, yes, but still very solid production uh, for Steele considering what they signed him to. Mm-hmm. He's just has been really good with finding guys that don't break the bank to come in and give you good production. And, you know, he just, he makes really, really savvy trade decisions. Mm-hmm. And most important part is, if there are any sort of issues on the team, he does not hesitate to address them and to Mm -hmm. fix them. Most notably Cam Talbot, not super thrilled with the, the timeshare that he was going to be 
with Mark Andre Fleury on. Mm-hmm. And so even when it looked as though that situation maybe had been amended, he said, you know what? We'll just find him another spot. And yeah. he got Philip Gustafson. It looks fantastic. No, a- absolutely. And you can't forget about Matt Boldy's steal of a deal. That's incredible. What was it? Seven year, uh, 49 million. Yep. That, you know, that's, that's going to be a steal. It, you know, give two, three years. It's, yeah, Boldy is fantastic. He really is. And uh, Garen did a fantastic job leading that with his agent. And that was a good steal. I, I forget, too, that he survived the standoff with Paul Theofanos, yes. uh, Will Kaprizov's um, agent. And so that yep. makes me want to solidify that grade even more because, um, <laughs> and it's just, credit. let's be honest, the the press, the, the sound bites that he produces are oh, just fantastic like the sound bites <laughs> around the talbot situation were great um any other time he's he's near a microphone there's usually something a plus that comes out yep. of it so we're we're rounding out the letter grades by giving a resounding a to bill garen and absolutely i there's i don't think there's any way to contest that no i agree well i think that is gonna wrap up today's episode austin thanks for stopping by today we'll definitely have to do this again uh listeners make sure you check out the wide array of content at 10,000 takes um easy to find them just just search 10,000 takes and uh, (laughs) find pretty much everything they have to offer uh including wild takes the wild side of things as well as it's a bit uh any of the other content that uh, 10,000 takes has in store make sure you follow along and um, enjoy everything that they've got. We will continue to keep you up to date with all things Minnesota Wild with new episodes all week long on your favorite podcast platforms. We're on YouTube. We're on Amazon Music. We're on TikTok. All the other social medias. Follow us everywhere because you never know what's going to pop up for new content. And uh, we're keeping you up to date with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Lockdown Sports Podcast Network.